Good afternoon, everyone. This is Naishad Gadani coming to you from sunny Melbourne. And today is 226th episode, the world's lo longest running LinkedIn live show. Um, and uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a roller coaster ride. And also, we are also you know, calling you from world's most lockdown city, um, you know, as well. We're close <laughs> to 252. And we are talking to somebody in Brisbane who's probably least closed down in the yeah. world. Right? So it's, it's a, coming from a pub. It's, and, and, you can, <laughs> and you can only see that from the smile of Dre, uh, that how, you know, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so welcome, everyone. Today we are, uh, you know, absolutely delighted to be joined by uh, Dre from uh, Brice Vegas, as they like to call that. Um, I have never understood that. You know, I, I know Las Vegas, Breeze Vegas, but you know, I, I I don't think so. It's it's as gorgeous as Las Vegas, but that's probably some sometime else we can chat on that. Uh, but today we are going to talk about continue to chat about our little cool product, Cards Against Insanity, and to um, you know we're going to pick up a card that uh, you know uh, Dre has liked. And we will be chatting more on that. So if you've got questions about uh, what these cards are all about, how it can help you to get a job, build your confidence, and expand your network, do send us uh, the comments and chat in the chat box, and we will respond to that. We will also put the link where you can find out more about how these cool cards can really help you out as well. So before we get to speak to Dre, let's welcome Caroline Brown. Thanks, Nash. Um, so, yeah, people can check out the link, but better, they can buy the cards. It's the best $34.95, including GST, that you'll spend today, I can guarantee. So, um, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic to have you here, Dre, and um, we've had you on the show a few times, which has been wonderful, and we're going to talk about this idea about future-proofing your career, creating a network that keeps on giving, and you've used sort of podcasts slash videos really effectively to build your own brand and your own network. So we want to kind of dig into that um, and then talk about how that applies to job seekers. So before I talk too much, I, I guess a great place to start would be get you to introduce yourself to the audience. Yeah, guys, I just want to say a massive, huge, ginormous like, thank you for having me back and also congratulations for Shame these fuck. bad boys. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant, absolutely uh, like awesome, and I didn't realize that you guys have got the longest um, linked in. That's amazing, absolutely amazing. Well, to so be honest, we're just claiming it, we, we don't know, <laughs> <laughs> we're just putting it out there. It's like saying the world's number one or the world's finest, you know, who's gonna yeah. test? <laughs> so. I love it. So, absolutely, yeah, absolutely love your show, and I'm so glad that I'm, I'm back for another edition. So a little bit about me, I am originally from the UK, so please don't hold it against me. I've been in Australia, Bris Vegas for about 13 years. I moved out for love, so for an Australian girl that I met over in London. I won't go into the story, but I was really scared about coming over to, to Australia. So I thought Australia was like the movie Crocodile Dundee, you know, with all the, like the sharks, the snakes, the spiders the crocs, the drop bears, like the kangaroos. I thought that everyone went to work in school on um, on kangaroos. But I came over for a holiday, went to Sunshine Coast, Gold Coast, and just absolutely fell in love with the place. So my background is in recruitment and sales. My company is a company called Job Search Queensland. We're changing the name to Job Search Branding. And I guess my business has really changed from helping young people get into apprenticeships and traineeships into helping sales professionals and now I'm helping people to become the leading authority in that their industry so this is yeah just really like great timing so I've got some great tips that, that I can share about my podcast fantastic so tell us because I'm not sure if it's the way that we found you but about your um uh, with your your podcast but you use podcasting slash a video as a really effective tool within your business maybe talk to people about how that works for you like what how that serves to you and your business yeah. and your brand so i think how it all started was just um so to be um to be heard you need to be seen and mm. at the time people were talking about creating videos so really short videos so i'd create it's really cringy now um, <laughs> but it's on my youtube channel 
So I created these like 30 seconds, minute videos where I'd give like a job search tip and then I'd give like a really bad dad joke at the end. <laughs> and um, I think a few people said, oh, I really like it. You know, it's, it's something different. And I got asked to be on a couple of podcast episodes. And then there was a guy called Lawrence Lotz, who's got a podcast called The Queen of Wall Street. He invited me on to, to his show. And I was really, really sort of nervous because I saw the caliber of people that he had on his on his show. And I was just so nervous. And the first time I went on to, this is probably a bit of a secret that I'm sharing, I absolutely butchered it. It was terrible. It was awful. It was the worst thing. And at the end, he said, look, do you want to do it again? And I was like, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so we re-recorded it. I don't think anyone knows that. And it was a lot better the second time. It wasn't perfect. But at the end, he said to me, look, have you ever thought about starting a podcast? And I was like, no. And he's like, I really think that you should do it. It's going to help to grow your personal brand. And at the time, I was like, no, I'm too busy. I've got, you know, like so much work to do. And then he's like, no, really, you should do it. And I actually done a course with him. So he taught me the YouTube, um, uploading your podcast into Anchor for the, the audio side and just all the hints and, and tips. And we went, went through the process. And I guess it's an expansion of my, my little videos. But what I really love doing now is actually getting other people such as yourselves to share. So similar to what, to what you guys do, to share their value, their knowledge, their, their tips and their guidance. And at the end, having getting you guys to do to do a dad joke. So it's, it's something different. It's something fun. It's very short. It's lighthearted. And I, I love it. It's one of my favorite things to do. And how does that work? Like a lot of people go, that's great like whether you're doing that from a business point of view or looking for a job point of view. But how does that serve you? What what does that, what are the benefits that you get from it? Yeah, so the benefits for me is that it helps, um, it helps with the, the know, the like and the trust factor. So the KLT yeah. factor, which I call it. So before people will hire you or they'll buy from you, they need to know you, they need to like you and they need to trust you. And it helps position me to be a leader in my industry. And the sooner that you start, the quicker that you will get to where you want to be. So it's like that old analogy of, you know, when's the best time to plant the tree? Like mm. 10 years ago. When's the next best time? Yesterday. When's the mm. next best time? Today. Mm. So um, you can be a leader and it gives you credibility. And especially if you're giving value and people can always see the real or true or authentic you as well. It's just a great way to build. I believe that your your vibe attracts your, your tribe. I love that saying. Do you want to repeat it for anybody that didn't hear it? Your vibe attracts your tribe. So Perfect. if you show up as yourself, you're going to attract people that are similar to you. Mm. So yeah, that's how you back yeah, to Yeah, I, I think that's, that's so true. I, I think we, by default, uh, you know, build a build a tribe around us, right? You know, by default, with our actions, with our inactions, I think, uh, you know, we build a tribe. the The challenge for a lot of professionals to future proof your career is to do it deliberately, do it, do it, you know, going out and and doing it deliberately. And you know, I I think it it could be a scary proposition for many. Many people ask, probably you, me, Caroline, everyone, that how. How do you guys do it? How do you guys find the time to do it? How do you, you know, have got so much ideas and everything else that you come up with and, and continue to engage them, right? Uh, I guess a lo lot of things comes from your involvement in the vocation and the work that you do. You kind of, one idea leads to other, kind of kind of start to synthesize a couple of ideas together and present it uh, to the audience as well. But if I can go back, did you know how did this come about in you know in the context of the cards against insanity, that we do ask people to it says how to future proof your career by creating a network that keeps on giving. Start your live stream podcast, is e newsletter or meetup. So if yeah. we can you know you know get your perspective on that, Dre, because this requires you putting yourself out. You're putting yourself like in the center of things, and you are kind of bringing people into your cause 
Tell us about, because the podcast does exactly the same. You're putting yourself out and you're bringing yes. everybody else to be involved. Tell us, how does this work from a job seeker point of view? You know, what, what do you think that they can do? Do you know what? It's um, so doing a podcast or putting out consistent content, whether that's, you know, like written pictures or however that may be, is very hard. And the, the hardest thing is just being consistent. And as you mentioned, coming up with those new ideas the benefit for a job seeker doing it is that say for instance they are going to be going for a new a new job the recruiter the hiring manager when they're doing their research when they're putting their name into facebook google um, or other places that information is going to pop up so it's going to show that you are someone that is trying to do something for your industry that you're trying to um, give value, share value, and that you would be a great asset to, to the company. So that is going to increase your value. So you're going to get paid more money. Um, but the thing is, there's not a lot of people, I believe, that are willing to kind of put themselves out there because things that come up such as, um, you know, like fear of rejection, what are people going to say? How am I going to be perceived? What if nobody, you know, like watches my episode, reads my newsletter? Um, so I can understand why people do it, but it's it's like anything. So once you start, you, it's it's a process. You're going to get better and better and better, and it's it's definitely not easy. Mm -hmm. And I would say, find your, I guess your best method. So if you're a great writer then you know, stick to emails and newsletters um, or putting content, written content on, uh, say, like LinkedIn. Um, or maybe the, you might be able to find a creative way to do something on, on YouTube. If you're great on video, then continue to do videos. Um, or even, you know, maybe if you've got like a, a face for radio or something, then like do, <laughs> do like podcasts or <laughs> audio podcasts or, or something like that. So. Mm. The thing I love about it, and I guess people don't, you know, this is a direct benefit, and Nate and I have found this as well, is that the act of, so you start a podcast or you start a um, live stream or whatever, you get to reach out to people um, for a reason other than wanting something from them. So you're starting to build that no like, and trust relationship. So it's, you, it's working one-on-one -on -one as you might reach out to someone and say, hey, do you want to be on my podcast? I think you'd be a great guest. You can talk about whatever. And so they come on and you've done them a massive favour to start off with that maybe will be returned or maybe when you do need something, you feel much more comfortable in going out and asking them for something or something just comes back because you've you've done it as well. So, But I wanted to go back to what you're saying about the reasons that people don't around sort of that fear factor in various ways. How did you get over that? Are you, are you just naturally a extroverted person or how did you uh, personally get over the fear you know, that's that's a great question so the funny thing is i think most people the way that i come across most people think that i'm pretty outgoing um and pretty mm. extroverted but i would say that i don't know if it's an introvert or an ambivert or an omnivert which, whichever one it is but i love my own space and, and like time um because i find that say when i do uh you know spend time with you know like groups of people it it takes up a, a lot of like my energy um but for me how do i get over it it's for me personally it was all about the the bigger picture so i was taking the you know that this isn't about me okay actually that's probably a bit of a lie it is part partly about me because um there were things that i wanted to to achieve but i knew from speaking to lawrence he said look it could be it's going to be a long journey so it might be a year two years three years four years before you see any you know like real success um so i knew that that was that's the goal so it's been just just over a year and there's a lot more things that i could do better but that's you know that's what what happens so um yeah that's probably yeah that's probably what i'd say if you're like Nation and I, I think we just sort of jumped in and didn't think, think about too much. So it's like, yeah, I can't remember, how, how did we start this? I, I didn't really, you suggested yeah. doing the LinkedIn Live at the start of the pandemic. and 
I think I think it worked out kind of you know in a way blessing in these guys even before we you know started to do LinkedIn Live daily you know we kind of you know uh, brainstorm the idea of doing something we did not know exactly what we could do but I think the pandemic provided just an you know an opportune moment for us to seize that. But I guess that one one of the other things that a lot of people you know can do, especially when you're looking for work, is to also meetups are also a great idea. You don't if you mm -hmm. feel that you are not able to generate content or you're not able to write things or video does everything. I think starting a meetup can also be a really simple idea is to like-minded people. If you follow, let's say you are a business analyst and you're looking at you know that kind of an environment you can start something which is just purely focuses on the on business analyst uh you know project manager or cyber security or mechanical engineers i think there is there is opportunities because you will then become kind of you attract everyone and you kind of you know what we say the queen bee and you're attracting <laughs> the other bees and make a hive if you think about it right you know i think that's yeah. also equally i also wanted to give a shout out to somebody who does this right now you know let call Ishani Nigam. Uh, you know, a lot of people may already know about, but she is a marketing professional, and she's got a really interest into advertising, marketing, that kind of a digital content, and she's got her own podcast as well. Now she started as a uni student, after finishing her graduation, she started. She just finished fifty podcast episodes, and she's interviewed oh. just you know great uh, you know you know diverse uh, you know people uh from various backgrounds so i think that just shows that when people are going to search for her name uh you know obviously a lot of great things about what she does is going to come up right so that's uh, that's a really like meetups and things like that is a you know is good idea secondly i think you know also that we suggest in our uh cards is that own your name you know before someone else does you know, I think that's also equally important that, you know, how many of us, you know, lucky for me that there is only one nation Gadani in the world, right? I'm one in a seven billion. And I actually put that on my business card. Lucky for everyone. <laughs> that's true, too. Uh, Just you know, that, 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 you know, I, I'm the only nation Gadani in the world and you can search for it and you, you land on this pretty face, right? But I think that, you know, getting your own domain name is also equally important. Building websites are not particularly expensive nowadays. And you can have that too. So if you can also tell us, Dre, a bit about it, what, you know, branding is a very buzzword. And what are some of the things that you've seen around that people are doing, especially in the context of looking for work? Yeah, so just, um, yeah, just on the, like the getting your own name, that is so, yeah, so important. So I've got, I think, yeah, DreMcLaughlin.com. And then I've actually bought uh, quite a few months ago, DreSpeaker.com as well. So that is, yeah, it's so valuable. I was thinking the hard thing though, is if you've got like a, a common name, like a, a John Smith or like Mary Smith, then that's going to be, yeah, pretty difficult. So there's, what you should do is have something that's consistent so maybe if you had this is just an example like mary smith eight on linkedin on uh like facebook on instagram or something and then that's consistent so when people are typing in you know like mary smith or mary smith eight then you'll you'll come up on, on all those sort of platforms so i forgot your question <laughs> It's around, um, you know, just the benefits of having your name, domain name registered. I was just going to pick up on something that you said there, Dre, because mm. the John Smiths of the I'm lucky as well. I think I've got a few Google gangers. And one of them is a gnome rescuer in the Blue Mountains. But anyway, <laughs> um, the thing about, like, if you're a John Smith or whatever, I think you could probably think a bit more creatively. And I was just reflecting on Victor Purton, who is known as that optimism man. And so, you know, when people go, I can't remember their name, but they talk on optimism and da 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 da, and he's used that as his um, as his tag type thing that that everybody um, sees, and they see it all the way all over LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram and that. wherever he goes. Yeah. So, you know, you can always do some something like that as well. I think that's right. Yeah, totally agree. And keep that. Yeah, keep that consistent. Yeah. Yeah. 
Nice, you look like you're about to say something. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Because <laughs> I'm going to check I my question. Consistent, that, that consistency is uh, probably the the most important uh, you know thing that I've found in terms of you know building your online brand. But also, if I can sort of look at Dre, because I think professional and personal brand both are kind of becoming one now. Uh, you know, and mm. I think especially when people are generally talking a lot about being genuine and being authentic about it, right? It takes, you know, can you, can you just expand on that? Because sometimes that those words have lost meanings, you know, if you can just consider, yeah. you know, who's authentic you, and if you, if you want to see all who's authentic me, come and stay with me at my home and you'll find out who's authentic, <laughs> right? You know, it's like, you know, it's like, I just sometimes feel that I think that, that we have, we have made that like so much pure that you need to be pure, you, you know, that like, you cannot have imperfections and then i've also noticed a trend that people are showcasing their imperfections also in a perfect way <laughs> right? so, yes. you know, seen that? you see that oh yeah. you know what you know and i just i just loathe some of those stuff and mm -hmm. and it is so clear that that's a that's an imperfection but it, but then you are taking an angle shot of something or you are you're talking about yeah. something and you're making, you're just extracting okay. some positive out of that imperfection. Tell us about how do you manage that? And is it, you know, is, is it, is it worthwhile to, to go on that far of, of like opening up uh, your heart and soul and everything else? I, I don't think so. I think that, that there's a, a bit of a line and cause I was saying, you know, your vibe attracts your, your tribe, but what you've got to think about. So, um, I used to work in the corporate world. There's people in the corporate world. So what I do now, if I was at maybe one particular like recruitment company, I don't think I'd be able to get away with some of the, the stuff that I do. So recently I've been writing really funny, um, but really engaging posts, but the headlines are very, very, very risky bordering on, um, cause there's a, yeah, there's a bit of sort of swearing in there there's a bit of it's kind of it's kind of like sex drugs and, and rock and roll and, <laughs> um, i'm giving my i guess my own sort of personal experience so that's where i'm coming from but then i'm relating that to um to pe yeah to people so they can resonate with what i'm saying but then there's also i'm adding value by you know maybe don't make the same mistakes that i did maybe try this and then you'll end up getting a, a better result so um be very careful with yeah corporate and because you know we've got cancer uh, not cancer cancel culture did i say that right cancel culture. Mm -hmm. yeah so there's a, a lot of that and i believe that there's a lot of like trolls out there that are maybe just trying to get you into trouble um because we are i guess you know like very sort of like yeah, P pc and our things are probably different to um you know maybe when we were yeah, when we were growing up so it's um yeah you need to be yeah, very sort of careful in in that corporate world because yeah you, you can end up like losing your job so mm. try and be as real as possible because as you were saying age people can see when when things are fake and it's just so mm. so yeah. obvious do you think um, you know it's sort of like this thing about having tats at work right so um like 10 years ago you know, there's a debate about whether you should show your tattoos and it's the same um, in terms of like what how much you show and reveal about about yourself like when social media first came out you know 15 years ago it was thinking around well so-and-so has a different religious view to me I'm not going to hire them or so-and-so has been seen drinking down the beach I'm not going to hire them but I think there's a lot more acceptance around whatever because maybe the extremes of what have been shown on social media are, are the worst but also um, everyone's like well they're a real relatable whole person as well so you know it's it's um and i guess may i'm just thinking out loud but if you're if you're having sort of risky risque headlines then if you're going to try to find a job that doesn't accept that for example that's not the right thing for you maybe yeah yeah that's a great point i love that yeah makes, yeah. makes sense yeah yeah can i also you know one, one of the questions that we you know you all contemplate is that 
you know, if you if you do the branding required, whether you start a live stream or whether you host anything, would it also become a like a too overwhelming for an employer too? And you said, hang on, you know, this person is just everywhere. It's like, you know, <laughs> you know, what, 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 how do you, let's say recruit, put your recruiter hat on, Dre. I want to know that if you if you see a, a business analyst who's got thousand people in his meetup and he's got a great podcast and he's still looking for work and you know he or she comes to you and you're an IT recruiter right and then you present that to the employer what would the employer think would the employer think wow that's amazing let's hire this person yeah so that's um I guess that could go two ways like one that they could be you know could be thinking like the employer could be feeling like threatened that okay maybe they're going to come in and they're going to make me look bad and like end up taking my job. So that's that's one way. But on the on the other side, I, I think about this is how I see it. There's so much value. So that new person that comes in, they could be bringing like so many people, like new customers, um, new potential like staff that are going to maybe join the team. I just feel it um, is very valuable. And it was similar to what you were saying earlier, Nash, about like meetups. So when you when you go to those meetups, it's all about relationships. Everything comes down to relationships. So even though you might have just met someone, it might not be that person that might be able to help you. It might be you know a second or third person or connection that that they know. So I believe that's what normally happens. Yeah, I think I think that's that's the uh, you know I've not come across with anybody who hasn't been hired because of their overwhelming for the <laughs> from from the other pers person's perspective, yeah. not from their perspective. But I think that that's another uh, kind of challenge that the job seeker will have to navigate or professional have to navigate as they are building their brand is that the not so much risks associated with it, but just to be mindful about it. Then I because yeah. then. You know, if, if you if if we talk them that it's a risk that that might be to their future careers and everything, I think we are also coming in the way of them building it, right? So otherwise, people will find it just to um, you know that that might really prevent their career growth rather than accelerate their career growth. Yes. But do you see that in Australian context and KB will also get your perspective that Australian employers are more kind of receptive to this kind of stuff or we are we are more still conservative and we feel that that's just too much for for an employer to handle i'll let you go caroline yeah. well i think i mean i i think we're a bit conservative to be honest like if you compare us to the states for example like just say compare what we do i i don't know that that there's that many podcasters live streamers in the career space that are doing it as prolifically as dre and, and you and i are doing right um i and and the same sort of like in the hr and recruitment space and and a lot of different professions there's not a lot of people actually doing it so i wonder whether that's like an inherent conservatism of australians um I mean, we do have the tall poppy syndrome as well because you you start a tribe, you start to be a leader by by leading people, by creating something like this, and then you don't have to be extraordinary. You just have to do it. And I think a lot of people do get threatened by that because it's like, well, who are Nash, KB and Dre to say this stuff? I know this stuff. Do you know what I mean? And there is some, some of that within, say, an employment context. So, yeah, I think it... I think it we are conservative, but I think, again, doing this kind of stuff and sharing stuff that's important to you that you think is important to others does attract the right kind of person to you because you don't want to be in an organisation or a company culture that doesn't let you be the full as, as full expression of yourself as you can be. And maybe I'm naive about that, but, that yeah, that's my 20 cents on that. Yeah, so to piggyback off what Karen was saying, so there's, I believe, um, I know earlier on during this year, there was about 2 million like podcasts that are going on at the moment, but there's only, I believe, over 500,000 that are actually like active. Mm. And most of those, I believe, are in America. So, yeah, Karen, mm. I, I, yeah, I totally agree with you. And with the tall poppy syndrome, so 
I guess once these podcasts uh, are popular, people are always going to be, you know, the like the trolls. They're going to be like, mm. just, yeah, and that's it's sad that that, that happens. Like that like people try and, um, or I guess in Australia anyway, try and yeah, like knock you knock you down, and you know, yeah. But that's yeah, that's I guess that's what we live in. You get so much benefit out of it, I think, and so much energy from people. And I know, like during the pandemic and during the first lockdown, and actually during the whole period here the thing that's kept nation i going is having guests like you on the show and around the world that you know we're sharing the same experience and it's a very um you know energizing type thing i wanted to ask you a question that i do have on the list is around how do you get time like how do you how much time do you devote to doing what you do and how do you manage that with everything else that you do that is a very good question no, that is a very <laughs> question and that is something that I have been struggling with big time this year so mm -hmm. when I started last year um, I, I was all guns blazing so I was getting out two to three episodes a week and then I wanted to get to 50 <clears throat> excuse me 50 by Christmas and I think I fell like 10 short and then this year trying to get the episodes out it's been maybe one a month two a month um, so it's been a real struggle just trying to do everything. So that's partly why I'm doing the 120 podcast episodes next week, which you're both going to do. So thank you so much. Uh, so doing that in 24 hours. But it's uh, I'm not going to say that I plan it out and that I'm consistent like every week. And it's um, I'm just trying to fit it in like whenever I can. Yeah. So um, if anyone's like looking at me thinking I'm going to follow Dre and how he does it, don't. <laughs> don't, mm. don't do that. It's just, just um, I'm just trying to do it when I can and when I can, I can mm. fit it in. So for it's me, a, oh, sorry, just, yeah. oh, sorry, just so for me, um, I don't have anyone that edits it for me. So I do everything like myself, mm. even though it does make total sense. So if it's time for money, like say the amount of money that I can make like myself in an hour compared to to get handing that off it's, it doesn't make sense but for some reason I just haven't I haven't done it so mm. I think it's a hard thing to hand over to start off with as well I know for our YouTube channel I've just started to get a video editor and I'm like mm, how much time am I saving and then I look at the results compared to what I do compared to what that person does I'm like I think the the, the benefits um, in that as well. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think also there is some things that you can do, like if you're going to be intermittent, I reckon, and just sort of drawing a parallel between our Cards Against Insanity and, um, you know, starting a podcast, it's kind of getting the concept, right, the, real, the concept that people would really beg for or resonate with that would do a lot of the hard work for you it's like what what is the market absolutely begging to know and how can you position that in a way that they can quickly go yeah that's it and I think that is something that that is uh, with a lot of people that have been very successful at it they do have that that point that people instantly get what what it's about and know it's for them when they see it basically do you mean that like the point of difference is that what yeah you mean, the or? point of difference and it's like who you know because I guess, say from the in the recruitment space, there's lots of um, or the career space. There's lots of people doing exactly what we do. You know, mm. they're putting out the same sort of content. But it, I think you know, if you're going to make it more efficient for yourself, it's actually spending that time up front, really defining what your point of difference is in your name yes. and your branding, yes. so people share it, like are attracted to it. They share it. They quickly understand it and that you know if, if you're using it to attract an audience a lot of that work is done for you in though that research basically yeah so yeah just being like crystal clear on, on what your outcome yeah. is yeah, yeah i love that love that i wasn't crystal clear in my explanation but that's pretty much what <laughs> I mean. you are you are yeah, but I think I think branding, you know, finding the niche or you know finding the point of differentiation is also an ongoing journey. It's not that you yeah. found your differentiation right now. It probably you deepen that understanding as you go along. My view on that point of differentiation is that you are the point of differentiation, and what you, what how do you say that is the point of differentiation, not what you say, because I think, you know, I, I feel that the 
the best job search book ever written is uh, what color is your parachute right it's the best job search book ever written was written back in i think you know 1970s or 80s yeah. and then um, you know i think it was 13th edition edition yeah. Yeah. uh you know that um, you know that was written and you know everything else i i think there are a lot of lot of great books and everything stems from it you know we are talking about various our flavor on things like informational interview was was probably talked about it in that book first time what yeah. we are talking about is the different applications yeah. Yeah. exactly you know, so we would <laughs> all have that book because it's still it's still book written for the job seekers but it's also invaluable for career practitioners like ourselves too but it's the flavor is what the differentiation is that's what i feel it's it's who mm -hmm. how do you say that is the differentiation not what you say it might take you might have to do a lot of research to to really say things differently uh, you know what you say you know it, it requires a lot of hours of work and then you find out you know what this is what i'm going to say because this is now different but initially mm -hmm. i think what you start with is telling your own spin on things uh, right yeah. and i'm finding that finding that spin is also incredibly important see i think my, my suggestion to those people who are starting out this journey or want to start is start mm. you can find your spin as you go along right in, in any game you know soccer cricket any game you just start and then you find out the way your body moves and the way you dribble the ball and everything else it takes a while what are your thoughts on that Ray? Yeah. Oh, so we are talking to me or to, yeah. 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 But, right. Yeah, totally agree. So you need to start along that journey. It's going to, there's going to be, it's going to be a roller coaster. You're going to make mistakes. Um, there'll be times where just for example, like a, with a podcast, you might only get like one, two, three people that, that actually, that actually watch it. Um, but then you've just got to think about the bigger picture and why you are doing it. So if you're doing it to, to give value and to help people. So ah, one thing that I was going to say is that when people are watching your content, so whether that's on like your, your YouTube, your LinkedIn, your Facebook, there are so many silent stalkers. So oh, yes. <laughs> you, yeah, so you are, so we are doing amazing things. So there's people that are watching that are, are thinking, okay, yeah, this is this is like some really great content, but they're, they're not gonna comment, they're not gonna like, but they can consistently watch, but they won't say anything. And sometimes this happens, they might actually reach out to you in like two years time and say, oh, I absolutely love what you've been doing. I've been watching you for the last like two years. Um, and yeah, that, that happens a lot. So there's lots of, lots of people that are watching. So I always want you guys to think about the positives, um, and mm -hmm. why the reason that you're doing it. So it will be hard and I can promise that it will be, as long as you stick at it, it will be worth it. Mm. I think, um, I read a few years ago about some research that was done by, about online communities and the it's like 90 percent of people are just watch eight percent of people will comment and like and two percent will actually create so the, like the act of just starting means you're in that that two percent basically of people that are shaping the discussion and leading the discussion so yeah. yeah um yeah you never know who pops up and who sees you and it's interesting from this from our live stream there's been some lovely success stories we had um uh, just Jackie from, I think, the University of Western Sydney at the time, she got um, a, a, a speaking thing on the ABC um, wow. asking her about the future of work and future graduates because they were putting um, some material out at, at that point. And then Amit, who was in India, um, was, what you know, coming to Australia, was watch, watching us and interacting with us, and he started his own live stream with, called Stories at Impact. And I think that has really helped him settle. I'm not sure that directly helped him find a job, but I'm sure that people would have looked at that. But it's really mm -hmm. helped him settle and integrate into um, Australia really, really quickly, um, despite being stuck in India um, unexpectedly for, what, six months longer than he expected, Nish? Yeah, so, right, um, yeah. yeah, that act of creation is, is really, really, really does put you ahead. That's, yeah, it's really powerful. I love those stories. I absolutely love yeah. it. 
Yeah. So we are not waiting just to also, Caroline didn't say that we are waiting for ABC to contact us too. That's right. <laughs> we are not going to pass on anyone's <laughs> phone number anymore. We have taken that pledge that they have to yeah. interview us. Uh, you know, I got excited when they rang. I'm like, oh, the ABC. Oh, Jackie. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... She's fabulous. She's really yeah, good. Yeah, it, it happens like, in school no, when... Like, when oh. Yeah, and I, it happens in a, in school when a when a when, a, when a girl comes to and say, oh, you know what? I want to talk to you and said, okay, yeah, go ahead. Can I get a friend's phone number? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's precisely how it happened. Look, Dre, it's been amazing to catch up, and thank you very much for coming along. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, to the thank show. You, Before so we sorry. depart, please make sure that you go and get uh, you know cards against insanity. Uh, you know, it is worth thirty four ninety five. And, um, you know, we are really looking forward to learning more. It, you know, it's, it's just gone to, you know, wow. many people and we're getting some really great feedback from them. So please uh, click on that uh, button, make uh, the purchase and we'll ship it out to you straight away. Caroline. Yeah. And people are starting to talk about Nashad's affair with the lady at the post office uh, because he goes there so often. <laughs> Does Nilda know Nash? You know? No. She okay. knows I go to the post office, but she doesn't go know anything. To the post office. But now you made it. Yeah. Now you, you just, yeah, you just ruined it. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Um, so apart from ruining Neshad's marriage, um, please follow the hashtag Cards Against Insanity to follow what we're up to with this. Follow the hashtag Career Care Package. If you're watching this on YouTube, we've got so much fantastic content on there. We're doing this weekly. We're putting up videos. So please subscribe. And I think, yeah, buy the cards. They're fab fabulous. And, you know, I'd love for our cards to be like um, what colour is your parachute, you know, the preeminent card game that everybody goes to for, for job search tips. So, yeah, that's basically it for me. And thanks so much for joining us, Dre. It's been amazing to have you. Yeah, thank you both. It's been awesome. I love like whenever we catch up. So I want to say a huge ginormous massive oh man, i just want to give you guys a hug <laughs> I'll, be seeing, I'll be seeing you guys like next week as well so can't wait yeah fantastic. excellent all right we don't know who's coming next friday but it would be someone amazing so uh, <laughs> tune in next friday 12 p.m and until then have a great uh, weekend and if you're eligible go and get vexed so that we all can uh, meet for in person Yay. and enjoy okay bye for now everyone bye for now Hey guys.